All right, so let's try again. See, MBP SKN for Photoshop is really, really good for boudoir photographers, glamour, fashion, fine art. Um, but uh, apparently YouTube did not like the previous video that we attempted to showcase how it works. So we have one here, which is a sort of a, I don't know, kind of a classic boudoir looking image. And we're gonna run SKN on it and show you how the cleanup works because SKN is really like, uh, to be honest, the best panel on the market for body skin. Body skin seems to be like a secondary thing. Most people, of course, are looking to edit faces because portraits are the dominant uh, thing that people shoot when it comes to, well, portraiture. But let's go ahead and run SKN. Uh, a couple settings that we're going to check if you're new to it. We're going to right click the little bottom left selection button, and that's going to let us choose how much of tolerance it's going to have on skin tone. Now, I think the skin tone should be pretty easy to select, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on loose and then go back. Loose just means it's a little more liberal with skin tone selection. And that's one of the key things. Let's go ahead and run it. We'll fast forward because uh, it probably takes about mm, 25 seconds to run in this high res image. We'll fast forward that, but then we'll talk about selection and then we'll show you you know we'll talk about how the selection was made um and how it's superior um and then we'll go and show some options on how to tailor the settings on skn for a good skin look here we go all right so yeah once again it took about 20 25 seconds but now everything is ready to go and we can tweak but let's take a look at that mask i was talking about this little bottom left button the eyeball here now that we're in the advanced cleanup mode we click it and we can see the mask. Now that is a super clean mask compared to what Photoshop normally can do because of the way we're helping Photoshop's vision, if you will, when it comes to skin tone selection. Now every mask is gonna be, you know, a touch and go. Some of them require more editing than others. Sometimes they're perfect, et cetera, et cetera. But that's why it's a flexible thing. It's just on a Photoshop mask. It's nothing proprietary. So you can edit it as needed. Now, when I say it's a, it's a, you know, body skin focused, tool let's let we're gonna put the face in there so we can see it but look at this shoulder right here for example let's say we take our smoothing amount all the way down we can see it looks more normal we'll go to the shoulder and and neck and all that okay smoothing we can increase that you see how it gets smoother and softer of course but we also have texture recovery radius let's go ahead and put it really high so you can see all right that's the original texture it's not an arbitrary noise we're taking the texture of the actual shot of the actual skin and we're allowing you to enhance it if you need to. We can also change the sort of radius of that. So let's put a tighter radius and that's gonna process for a quick second because it takes the original image and re-extracts the skin texture. So now if I put it really high, you can see how smooth that is. Now, how does that look? Well, let's turn it on and off. Okay. How gentle and smooth it's made everything look. Okay, and that's just the beginning. We can do so much more. So let's say we want to increase our secondary smoothing and really smooth this out quite a bit and take a lot more recovery from there to there. Okay, secondary smoothing, we can take that down just a hair from there to there. Okay, if we want a super, super glammy look, right? We can do that. Okay, take down our texture recovery. We have Luma compression, which overall be easier to see. Let me Let me tone down some of this intensity here and put a different texture recovery radius. As you can see, this is how we use SKN for like glamour, boudoir, things like that. We we think about the entire body. Now, Luma compression, what does that do? Well, it kind of brings down the highlights and brings up the shadows. So here's a high contrasty image. Luma compression kind of balances more. You may want that either a little bit or a lot to kind of help those high shadowy images. Now, if it's super, super dark and the shadows are pure black, well, that's a different story. That won't happen. But you can have a little bit of Luma compression. You can increase or decrease contrast overall, which can help similarly. You should try them out uh, just to see. And then luminosity, of course, is overall brightness of the skin. Okay. Now, it does, you know, balance the, uh, the skin tone in general so for example the hue balance if i put it on maximum it takes all the skin tone that it analyzed and it chooses a uh, average color as you can see it went into the hair as well so now her skin tone is literally all the exact same tone that's a little bit strong but we start around 30 percent, and we can play with it to help bring the yellows and the reds you know kind of those pinky tones those yellow green tones make them match a little bit better now because the mask of course is just a photoshop mask we can come in and edit out the hair with a black brush real quick if we don't want that it takes two seconds and then we can continue our work also when you find a average color it may be too pink or too yellow for you and that's what hue balance adjusts is for we can make it more yellow we can make it more pink it just depends on what kind of result you've gotten and what you think works now as you can see 
off and on. Let's go ahead and lower that luminosity a bit and a little bit of secondary smoothing. There we go. I don't mind that. That's a nice, super smooth look so far. Now we can go back to our tone section. And when we hit play here uh, to apply some really, really awesome HSB replacement toning, um, it's going to use the mask that I already have for cleanup, which is really great, right? Because if I modify the mask, I don't have to redo it. So I hit play. Let's let that finish. And now that it's done, I can start making changes. So if I want to deepen the tone a little bit, the skin tone, I can. If I want to bring new highlights up, I can kind of choose the range of those highlights and bring those up and down to add some more shaping. We can add linear contrast, which is the opposite of luma compression, you know, in case we want to do some overall mastering. And we have a mid-range shift on that, by the way, so I can favor the highlights or favor the shadows on that shifting if I want. Overall desaturation, pretty common to use, especially when you're deepening a skin tone because colors can get a little out of control. On the grading, we have a bunch of presets that we can try. This one has a little bit of green to it, a little bit of brightness to it. I like that. Different blend modes, if we want more intensity, I don't mind that so much. Let's take the opacity down to 11, there to there. A little strong in those highlights, let's take those down. But you know what, actually the whole look is fine, so let's take the opacity down. There you go, that's the entire look, opacity down to about 60-ish percent, 56 now. Okay, so we went from this to this. And as you can see, let's zoom in on that shoulder again. Okay, we went from this to this and given us that textured glamour look. And we can always go back and modify the cleanup section if we want. But hopefully, like I said, YouTube won't remove this one because <laughs> hopefully it'll deem it uh, appropriate for YouTube use. But we know that if you shoot glamour or boudoir or fine art nudes, which we can't show on YouTube, that is where SKN really shines is on that body skin. Because again, most of the tools that are out there, even the AI based ones are really focused on faces and again that makes sense but we have something a little bit different that we feel the boudoir and and like i said glamour fashion fine art nude photographers can benefit from <laughs>